All right, we're back on the Kevin and Fred show, and today I'm joined uh, by my newer friend, Ryan Butler, uh, out of the D.C. area. Ryan, how's it going, buddy? Kev, what's going on, man? It's great. It's great. It's not as uh, warm as it is out there with you, but, you know, we'll, we'll take what we got. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely probably a little warmer here uh, in Phoenix than it is for you there on the East Coast, man. Well, hey, dude, I'm, I'm excited to do this because you and I met. It really wasn't that long ago. We, we showed up to a mastermind in San Diego that, that Frank Klesitz and Viral Marketing was putting on with uh, just the two of us and a few others. Like, you know, what was there, four or five other people there in the room? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We shared some really cool ideas, got to know each other a little bit, kind of shared what was working. And, uh, and I'm, so I'm stoked to kind of just dig in a little bit more on your business and uh, pick up the conversation you and I started at lunch that day. So... I figured we'd just go for it, man. Do me, do me a favor before we get, before we get real, real into this, give the listener who maybe, you know, doesn't know you give, give us like the, the elevator elevator pitch on your business. Like I, you've got business partners, maybe tell that how long you've been in business, things like that and where you're at. For sure. So my name is Ryan Butler. I'm the managing partner at coalition properties group. We're based out of Washington DC Metro area. And uh, I have two partners. I have um, just hired somebody. So we have five full-time staff members and we usually keep somewhere around five to seven agents at this uh, current juncture. Um, last year, we closed 313 units, um, total units for a volume of 139 million. And um, yeah, we're, I think we somewhere around top 60, you know, like 61 in all of Keller Williams. So, you know, a decent, decent little production there. So, yeah. And how long you been, how long you been selling real estate? Yeah, this is my fifth year. Fifth year. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> didn't take you long okay so first of all i think the first question that people hear when when they hear that is how do you go from i got i got in real estate five years ago to well north of a hundred million dollars in volume in in five years man i mean in under five years really um and i know that's a very detailed and like got has layers to that answer but give mm -hmm. us the, like what you, how do you do that like give us a little bit there well, the first thing is you got to sell real estate. <laughs> Indeed, right? No doubt. Uh, yeah, for sure. And that sounds simple, but to be honest with you, right? Uh, sometimes people come in with really grand plans and forget the basics of it all. And that's, you actually got to sell real estate and get out there and sell it yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, part two of that is you need to have a plan. So this was actually on my five-year goal list since I started with Keller Williams. When I started, I knew that I would start a team. I knew that I was, I wanted to be top 100, uh, Gary Keller mastermind. And I knew I wanted to be a North of a hundred million. That, that literally was all in my first kind of intro to real estate sales. How did you, I mean, most people don't even know that those things like exist or they're possible when they get into the business. Like, how do you, how do you even come in thinking about that from the get go? Yeah. So I read the red book, you know, anyone that's in real estate sales, or any business for that matter, the millionaire real estate agent is a fantastic book yeah. to give you a foundation, right? It's a manual essentially on how to build and run a real estate sales business. So I read the book, <laughs> what a right? Concept. Uh, yeah, what a, and yeah, it's a thing. And then I followed the models, right? In addition to that, um, the first thing that I did when I got, got in the business, because I mean, I'm, I didn't start fresh out of college, so i had been in another career. I kind of knew certain things you needed to do and what you needed to learn when first coming into a business. So I sat down with all the top people and I learned about their businesses. So I knew what the benchmarks were. Right. Yeah. And then and then after that, I was really able to put my own little stamp on what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I love that, man. That's, that's super smart. Number one, you, uh, you went out, you sought mentors, you actually read the book, you actually <laughs> sold real estate. What a concept. And, and we're laughing probably, I'm guessing we have a similar experience and in running into people. It's like, they want to go straight from point A to point Z, never doing the steps in between and going B, C, D. You, you got to do all it all in order, order, man. You got to yeah. do it in order. Yeah. Yeah. Something Gary taught me a long time ago. Su success is, uh, it's sequential, sequential. Not, not simultaneous. And 100%. Uh, there's no doubt that so many of us, and, and part, partly I think it's maybe the, maybe it's the personality types that we attract as an industry where there's a lot of sort of like that ADD, like shiny object <laughs> syndrome, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But for sure, I, I know there's a lot of us that want to take the shortcut. I think that's probably human nature. Um, it's human nature. But, but the reality is we, we got to go through the process, right? Yeah, 100%. You got, you got to do the work. You got to wake up every day 
and do the work. And then you'll look and all of a sudden you got a really big business, right? Yeah. It's funny how that, how that tends to, to work out as we were interviewing a few folks, um, the day before you and I recording this. So yesterday, uh, and we did, there was like three different agents running different size businesses, all, all really big. And everyone was like, well, I don't know. My answer is kind of boring. And I was like, the theme here is that it's boring it is. because you're just being consistent and you're doing the work. And as much as no one really wants to talk about that in this business, because listen, man, they see you on stage, they see other agents on stage. They're like, oh man, I want to be like him. I want to be like her, you know, oh, they're doing social media or they're running radio and TV. I want to do that. They don't realize that there's so much more in between those steps um, that really we have to focus on and, and do the work, as you just said. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Um, the, the ADD stuff actually, you know, sometimes it helps in the beginning, right? Because you're able to like juggle so many balls, right? But then like, and because that's like the entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. Right? It's like, do everything, wake up, grind it out, pound it out, like whatever needs to be done, you do it, right? And then at some point, it's like, uh, this is not sustainable. You look around and you're like, I just can't keep doing it like this and keep growing. Yeah. Right, you may be able to do it at a certain level, but if your goal is to have a bigger, you know, um, sales business, then it's a little bit tougher to do that. And everybody's not meant to have like massive sales. Everybody doesn't want that. So, like, you got build it the way you want to live your life. Yeah, like, I've always... like I just got like I got off. Of, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. So, uh, a friend of mine, um, I was just hiring a, a a new operations person, right, and. I was talking to my friend and he was like, you know, when I was, um, you know, five, 10 years ago, I thought I wanted, I saw everybody on stage. I wanted 300 unit business. And he's like, you know, I'm selling 80, hundred units and my life's great. And I was like, yeah, that's fantastic. Right. Like yeah. you just know what you want after a while. He gets to spend time with his kids. He coaches wrestling, like all these cool things. And it's like, that's fantastic. That's a great life, man. Yeah. We have to I always keep, the way I've described it to myself, like my internal dialogue was decide what relationship you want to have with your business and have it right. And for me, that's that, like, that's the way. And, and whether that's the big team, whether it's a small team, I think people sometimes, cause we've got a large team, very similar to yours uh, from a, you know, from in a lot of ways, anyways, not, not super similar, but it's a large team and it's, it's a lot of units and it's, it's just different problems, right? There's nothing, there's nothing right or wrong, but we, we look at we, like you're like the guy you're interviewing said, like you look at someone on stage and it's easy to go. Yeah. I want the 300, 400 units, 500 units. And, but the problem is there's other problems with that, that it's not all just that high, you know, high production stuff. It's not like everything gets easier. It's just get, you just get different problems and nothing wrong with that. Uh, but there's also nothing wrong with choosing a different path, having a different business model, um, and not everybody, you know, like you, you mentioned Re millionaire real estate agent, which I think is an amazing book and everybody should read. It's a great resource and manual to, to go back to. And I think what, what can happen a lot as we go, because it's, we refer to it as the model. What can happen is people tend to think there's only one model and the reality is right. There's a million different ways to make this happen. Um, something you said stuck out to me though is you started, you started talking to the best. You started, you started asking the others and um, tell me, like, tell me more about that. Like that come natural to you. Like, what was that like? Was there anybody in particular or any few people in particular where you're like, you know, like absolutely this, this moved the needle for me. Yeah. I actually just went along and saw what the best teams, the highest producing teams were in my office. And then I sat down with all of them and I learned about their business. Um, one trick to that is, is when you speak to someone who might have a bigger business than you, try to figure out a way to add value to their life, right? Because otherwise it becomes one of these, let me pick your brains and like, I mean, you can only do so many of those. So you're like, I'm sorry, dude, I can't let you pick my brain. I don't have the time to, right? Yep. However, if you're bringing value to that person, when you're meeting with them, they might wanna meet with you again, right? And what's fascinating about it is like, well, I just started, like, what kind of value could I bring? One of the easiest ways from being a real estate agent, you are, you are the ultimate connector. So like lean into that role, right? This person, you might talk to this person and they have this problem. And then you talk to person B and they have a separate problem. 
or they might have the solution to person A's problem, right? And you can say, well, I spoke with so-and-so and this is what they're doing, right? That's just a little nugget, but that's valuable. And that's enough Super value valuable. to make you want to continue a conversation. Right? I'll tell you what, man, that's half the reason. I mean, the reason I do this podcast is totally selfish. And a lot of it is I'm doing constantly what you just said to do um, is I'm always looking like, well, I know this person's really good at this and this other person's got this problem. They should like, let me connect them and be a value to, to, to both of them. Um, and yep. cause I really just, I genuinely like to learn how, how people are succeeding in this business. And man, I think that's huge. I have a friend here book of an agent. I, know, I used to know, or I mean, I still know him, uh, but years and years ago when he was first starting out in the business, there was this, you read millionaire real estate agent. So you know who Russell Shaw is. Uh, he's in the book plenty mm -hmm. of times. Um, so Russell is, he's the guy's a legend. Uh, and he literally didn't know Russell mailed him a check for $500 and said, I would like to take you to lunch if you'll cash this check because, because he knew I can't just be like, got it. They can't be the got a minute guy, but he uh -huh. wanted to pick, he did want to pick his brain. So, I mm -hmm. mean, that for him, I'm not saying everyone, you should just go mail people checks. I think that was making a statement and obviously it stood out because so yeah, many people sure. do just want a minute and you can get got a minute till, you know, till you don't have any time to work on your own business. I used to tell people, listen, I would love to sit here and have those conversations, but if I only helped you and not my clients, like then I wouldn't have the production. You wouldn't even want my opinion anyways. So I got, I like, I gotta go. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. So I love that you're constantly learning. Um, you mentioned too, like what, uh, something about prior to real estate, what did you do prior to real estate? What's your, what's your background in? Yeah. So, um, my degree is in computer science actually. So I'm a, I'm an engineer by trade, but I was never really that good. So, uh, <laughs> I was an engineer that they hired. You're the, only he, honest, he you're the only honest engineer I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't that good, man. Uh, I was good enough to, to be dangerous, right? Um, but where I brought a lot of value and what translated really well was that I was able to connect the two worlds. So you had these really nerdy backend engineers who spoke their language, right? And didn't want to speak the front end's language, meaning yeah. like the actual people that use the software and the, or the people that are paying them. <laughs> they didn't want to speak their language. So I was a translator. Yeah. Right. And I would be in all the meetings and I end up doing all the hiring I, because they trusted me on both sides. So, yeah, um, it's well, kind that's of fell so into that needed. consultant role. I see that all the time. Like, we, I mean, you see that for sure on in real estate technology companies, like because there's so many of them. And it's just like, you know, as realtor, you think one way um, and, you know, on the back end is programming. You, It's a different it's typically a very different mindset. It's it's kind of like a broker, right? Brokers are, yep. are usually thinking about how do I mitigate loss or mitigate, mitigate risk, I should say. And how, do you know, it's a different mindset. And so when you can have someone that can bridge that gap, like there's no doubt that's that's highly valuable and, and pretty rare. Yeah, so it, it got me paid enough money. Um, but, you know, I, I was a simple, you know, I'm a, I'm a little country boy from Mississippi, man. So I, I had country, I had small, small town dreams. All I wanted to do was be a doctor when I was growing up. I was like, that, that was it. Like being a doctor, I was like, that's the top of the world. And then I go to school and then I suck at being like <laughs> being a doctor, right? I started taking all these science classes uh, and I was like, this is no good. Um, so I switched it up and ended up going with like kind of the math computer science route. That's awesome. So obviously, do you feel like that's been a benefit to you in your, in your business so far? Yeah, because I, I tend to be, so my role on the team tends to be more uh, operational management, um, organizational development, right? And there's some structure behind that. And there's some like long-term thinking and thought processes. So that really plays into planning out systems and empowering people to, to own them. Okay. That's cool. So tell me about like, so you and I recording this, it's, it's, we're towards the end of February, 2021. Um, so gosh, two months into it, like, tell me what's, what's on the horizon for you guys. Like, what do you, how do you, where do you see your business going in the next 12 to like, even 36 months? But like, like, is there anything different that you're doing or kind of what are your, some of your plans and goals that you're, that you're going after at this point? Yeah. So I kind of look at it as like uh, chess pieces, or, um, or, you know, just look at it, look more like a war game, right? And so right now we're still building the castle, the first one, right? We're building the first castle and we're trying to put a moat around it. So our current business model, 
that's heavily sphere based referrals, mm -hmm. um, past clients, that's 90%, 90, almost 95% of our business, right? So we're trying to kind of put a bow on it, if you will. And then we're going to start uh, building other castles going out and, and, and putting other pieces on the board that are going to continue to build the business. So that's our, that's how we're framing it. Right. And I then love, uh, I love how focused you are on where the business comes from. Like, I'm sure if we really looked at every deal, there's a couple different sources, like stuff trickles in, but you are so focused on where that business actually comes from. Yeah, because I, I know for us to continue, we have to add other layers to other kind of diversify a little bit, but we've been like, we're a met space business, right? However, we, these people we know, like, and trust us and, and vice versa, like that's where we get our business. We're lifestyle, we're lifestyle marketing, right? So Love that. Um, people, you know, we're, we're not, you know, I'll say there's three types, right? You're going to either talk about real estate, you're going to talk about lifestyle, you're going to talk about wealth building, right? And so we've been more on the lifestyle piece of that. And that's where a lot of our um, clientele come from. That's awesome. I love that. Man, it's so, so focused. I can tell that you know what you're doing because you make it sound so damn simple. And, and when it's, <laughs> when you're clear, it is simple, or at least it sounds, yeah. it's hard work, but it is simple, right? Yeah. I mean, simplifying things is probably the most important thing you can do, right? Because, you know, having a whole bunch of stuff in your brain, trying to figure all it out, like, man, if you can simplify it and just do kind of one thing, right. And really own that and then move on to the next thing, that's ideal, right? Um, some people don't really go by that philosophy. They kind of want to do it all at the same time, but like their personality works for that. Like mine does not. Right. I'm like, build, build this bad boy here, make this rock solid. And then like, let's go out and build some other pieces. Yeah. I know for me, like I naturally, I tend to want to do a hundred different things. So I know if I let myself do more than like one or two, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to go out and end up doing 10 or 20. And so it, the easiest for me is just to rein myself in and say, no, there's only one the only one thing's most important and only one thing is next most important after that's done. Yep. And if I, cause if I don't do that, I'm going to end up just scattered all over the place. Got totally scatterbrained. Yeah. I still, I still happens. Like it happened to me like the last 60 days. And I was like, Ryan, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> stop doing that. I was like, ah, stop it. <laughs> I, I have that talk with myself sometimes too. I, I can relate to that. You know, it's like, what are you doing, dude? Like, why are yeah. you even, why are you even thinking about this right now? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think that's natural tendency, especially someone like you, you've achieved so much in this industry in such a short period of time that it's, you know, naturally like, there's, there are opportunities. And I think when you start to have some of the su success that you, that you've already had, you realize there's so much more out there. There's so many more people out there. You and I were talking about someone we both know uh, mutually, Bo. Like, and you look at a guy like him who's who's accomplished so much already across many different businesses, and you go, "Whoa!" It's really easy to again go back to that first example we talked about. See it from the stage point of view, which has got all these things going right. on. But there are there, there's truthfully all these steps in between, you know, point A and point and point B. It's not just leaping from one thing to the next. Yeah. And, but he's also been playing a game for 15 years and that's what people forget about. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, you see all these successful people and they're living the, in the moment. Right. Like it's kind of like IRR, right. The term IRR, like uh, your internal rate of return. It's like, yep. no one ever thinks about the time value of it. Like how long it took to get to that, to, to get to that point. So like for me, a, a lot of it is telling myself to be patient and not, um, try to run and do everything right now. And it's like, it's really like buckle down and make sure the sales business, cause that's the money generator. And that's the, that's the fountain of, of wealth and you for all other businesses we're going to create. So you gotta make sure that that is uh, in good hands and taken care of. No doubt. Anytime you see something really, really taken off and, you know, doing like the classic hockey stick, if you will, when you look at a growth, you know, chart or graph, you, you can guarantee that there was a lot of time. I mean, it's so rare that that's instant, right? There's there's only so many of those um, unicorn type of companies and you don't typically see that in real estate. It's actually, um, you know, in, in even all of the most successful real estate companies, if you look at the, probably the top five or so, they've all been around a lot longer than people realize. Sure. And, it, and it can feel and look, going back to the conversation I had yesterday, really boring, really mm -hmm. boring because there's a lot of time and effort put into it um, that feels boring. 
Well, let me ask you this, man. So I'm going to hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions just for fun. Like, let's do what you, it. What are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? Um, that's a good question. I'd have to look at my phone. Um, the, I would say a couple of things. So I've been reading about fitness more. Okay. Uh, the book I just read was a book by Joe Fairless. And that's he's a multifamily um, real estate syndicator. Okay. So I just read his book, right? I literally cool. just finished it last night, uh, but I got a couple different books going on at the same time. So I'm like, oh, which one am I using, uh, reading right now? And then I'm reading like the six, uh, it's something like the six best exercises to do, like it's kind of simplifying my day. So those are two books I'm reading right now. That's awesome. What's, uh, is there any one book, like if you, if you had to say this is the book that you recommend the most or you give out the most, um, what sticks out to you? If it's for sales, I'm definitely a millionaire real estate agent. Um, in general, I uh, the one thing, the one Great thing, one. yeah, just so that people can focus on one thing and always coming back to that, um, having a GPS, a goals, priority strategy set up for yourself, right? Like having goals and then prioritizing what's important to get done and having the strategies and then coming back and what do you focus on, uh, you know, yearly, monthly, uh, weekly? Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's solid. I love that. What, um, if you were starting over today, mm -hmm. like let's say today, like you got your license this morning, this mm -hmm. afternoon is going to be your first afternoon in real estate. Like, what would you do? Like how, where would you start? Knowing, knowing what you know now have obviously having a lot of experience already. Yeah. I think I would start, um, probably similar the way I did, which is with viral marketing. So I started with viral very early in my real estate career because I, I wanted uh, evergreen content and I wanted videos to prove my, um, uh, what's that word? When like people trust you, like basically like the trust factor. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to do that very early on because um, I, when I'm top of mind for people at that point, it was about something else. So I needed to change that to real estate. So I would, I would do something that reminded them that, Hey, I'm a real estate professional now. <laughs> That's a good one. I should probably, I should probably, Think it back, I, probably, I should have done that a lot sooner too, you know, no doubt. I, I like that one. What, what do you, when, when people do come, when now, when you get, Hey, got a minute. Cause I know mm -hmm. you get that all the time. What do you typically find yourself telling, telling those agents or those folks that are looking for some advice? Yeah. I usually focus on what their big goal is, um, what their financial goal is and, um, what their, um, personal, um, what their personal goals are right? It's funny enough. Um, so they can set up like a little 15 minute chat with me, but they, they don't abuse that. Right. And then they can also um, come to any group teachings that I'm doing. I'll try to point them in the right direction first, because if I'm not the person, I'm just going to tell them I'm not the person. Like, like I can tell you stuff, but you don't want to hear from, from me. I send them to somebody else. Right? Go, go talk to that guy over there. <laughs> go talk to the expert. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that, man. Well, let me ask you this. What do you like? What what should we know about you? Like, what, what do people maybe don't know about you that's surprising? Like in business? Just um, no, nah, man. Just you general? personally. Yeah. Business, general, personal, doesn't matter. Man, I, I'm like a little bit, I'm really into um, performing, performative sports and arts. Okay. So, I mean, I played football in college, but I also did like, you know, played instruments. I, I did musicals. I did honor choir, all kinds of stuff. I, and I love to travel. You know, I traveled all over uh, Europe, South America, been to Asia, been to East Africa. So I, I love travel. Um, I love learning languages. I learned Spanish in like eight weeks um, by pounding it out four hours a day for eight weeks. Spanish yeah. In eight weeks. Yeah, yeah, I learned Spanish in that week so I could go down to Colombia and hang out and speak Spanish, so. Yeah. Man. And so I'm like a little bit intense guy. Like I like to like really get in there and like needle in there. Right. And I learned some stuff. I just bought a guitar. So we'll, we'll see if I can use that. That's awesome, man. And you, so like you try, you try, you've always traveled a lot, even like as young as being a, when you were a kid too, right? Yeah. Military brat. So, I mean, I lived in Germany for six years. Oh, for six know? years. Okay. Yeah. For six years. Yeah. 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 Um, well, my dad, he's retired air force and yeah, we just kind of, kind of get that travel itch and just go different places. Um, yeah. I used to be a semi-pro uh, salsa dancer 
fun fact. <laughs> I, okay, I, so I, I've been recording this podcast for just over two years, and you're definitely the first person to say that. Like, there's no <laughs> doubt nobody has brought that up. So, like, if nothing else, I'm going to be like, if I hear anybody asking me about salsa, like, I'm going to like, you got to know Ryan Butler. Like, there's Ryan no Butler. doubt. He's, he's your guy. He's your guy. For sure. I love dancing. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, obviously, too, you're into growth and you're into learning more because when we met, like, you're in D.C., we met in San Diego. You just gotten off a plane, like a long flight. And <laughs> man, it was a lot, it was late. And, uh, and you were like, I'm here, let's go. Like, you know, you were ready, you were ready to hit it and learn and, and kind of, you know, get to know everyone. And, and, uh, so I, that stuck out to me, man. Like the minute you showed up and it's something I appreciate about you. And, um, you know, you just kind of confirmed that even more so today with some of these stories. So that's cool. Oh, thanks, man. I, I appreciate you and all the wisdom you brought, man. You've been in the game for a long time. You know, you put your time in and, and it's great to see you still growing, right? Like you still got goals and you still got a lot of things, which is something people, I think, wonder. I just had a coaching call today and she was like, well, Ryan, you're le- you have telling me to leverage all of these things off. What am I going to do? <laughs> right. I said, don't worry, you'll find something. You'll so, figure it out. You'll yeah. figure it out. You'll, you'll figure it out. No doubt. I mean, you know, the old saying is, uh, I mean, as kind of cheesy as it can sound, it's I, I, I firmly believe it's true. If you're not growing, you're dying. Like those, sure. those are the only two states in life. There's growth and death. Yeah. And, um, I think the same, it's not that we can't have periods of time because, you know, life happens, stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Um, we all, we all get punched in the mouth as I, as I like to call it, like sure. from time to time. But the reality, when you look at, you know, you look at the years or however you want to look at it, like you, you gotta always be trying to get better and, and grow. Like the minute you think you got to figure it out, you can, you can bet you're about to get punched in the mouth real hard. Just like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, like Mike Tyson punch in the mouth type of real hard when, as soon as you think that. And so, um, got it, got to be doing that. Got it. And I think too, it's always nice to in like internally, I was thinking it's always nice to feel like there is something more, there mm-hmm. is something better. And uh, clearly there is, cause there's people that have done significant, take what you and I have done, put it together times by 10. And there's people that still far surpass that right. in and out of real estate. And so for me, that means there's, there's more inside. How do I get more out? Like, how do mm-hmm. I get more out of myself and, and the, those around me? Being the best you, you can be. That's yeah. a phrase we use a lot. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's what you got to do, right? It's kind of the foundation. All right, all right man. Let me, uh, is there anything else that, that I should have asked you that I haven't uh, as we start to wrap up before I ask you kind of a final question around, um, you know, just my kind of parting shot? Um, hmm. Or anything you want to talk about, like anything you want, like anything at all that I should have brought up. Yeah, I'm thinking like, uh, let, let's see. I was used to use the videos. I think videos are so important to share out because um, one of the things is that we don't spend a lot on marketing. We we just increase our marketing budget. I'm not saying it because I'm proud of it per se. It's just factually what it is, right? Like we spent one percent of our GCI, our gross commission income on marketing last year, right? So our our profit margin was nice because we don't we don't spend 10 or 20 or 30% of it on marketing, right? So, yeah. um, but a lot of that has to do with just being authentic. Authenticity is the most important thing you can do, particularly through lifestyle marketing. No doubt. I like that, that's good. Um, where can people find you? Like if someone wants to, Hey, got a minute, just kidding. But if someone wants to like kind of follow along <laughs> your story, kind of see your flavor, get to know you a little, a little bit better from afar. How do people do that? Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at, uh, at Ryan Butler Hoya, like H O Y A, like Georgetown, like Hoya, a Georgetown Hoya? I went to school. Okay. Yeah. I am a Georgetown Hoya. Yeah. yeah. So Ryan Butler Hoya. Uh, you can also follow my company at, at coalition properties. Uh, that's you'll find that as well on uh, Instagram. And then you can find me on Facebook too. Cool. All right. We'll put those links in the uh, show notes as well. And Ryan, thanks a lot for spending some time with me today, man. I'm looking forward. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to hang out in person again sometime soon this year. Kev, thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Pleasure is all mine. We'll talk soon.